Sometimes we see stuff far off. We get a glimpse. I mean, obviously the big, big one would be um, Jacob having a dream of the ladder and angels ascending and descending on that ladder. Well, what about David? David saw a glimpse as he worshipped the Lord. Incredible, incredible psalms. Inc just incredible places in the spirit. Because um, we don't even have the music. Uh, nevertheless, out of that, out of his experience and hours and hours and hours of worshipping God and writing things, thinking songs, songs to the Lord, came changing the whole of the Levitical code up to that point to adapt it for, um, well, mass choirs, really, mass choirs, mass instrumentalists, um, just just a glorious thing. You had to be 30, you had to be skilled in the word, uh, and you had to be skilled in music, in all your instruments. That whole protocol. But I'm, I'm saying this as a background because um, think about Maurice Sorella. Maurice Sorella had a heart attack in 1961 and obviously got very um, frustrated with the Lord. Why, why don't I get a heart attack, you know? And God said to him, I want you to build me an army. And so in that generation, in that context, um, Maurice Sorella carried that. And we all, you know, those that know, know that he thought of, you know, the best, best way that he could was to hire a hotel. So he hired a hotel called the El Cortez in San Diego for six months. And the first intake stayed there for six months. One of those was um, Ayurat Sayafor, who went off and promptly built a huge church in Nigeria. But um, later, Morris felt to adapt it, and he used to take it around stadiums. And the idea of schools of ministry with, with the best, most anointed speakers that he could find in the body, and he'd invite them, and then they would minister intensively uh, for very short periods and he found that that was nearly as effective as the whole six months but even that is still viewing things afar off why? because Jesus now wants bodies, complete bodies ministering multi-ministry bodies used to people who are used to all fishing in with nets and helping each other in with the nets and not trying to be the big star person but helping each other in with nets so that the nets don't break and then we don't lose any fish this is the norm this is the acts to norm for church people have been into the ground died now God's raising them as a fruitful plant in multi-various forms of ministry and experience and, and word. And, well, everyone's got totally different callings over their life. And they're ministering in over one city in one church. This is the blueprint that we've totally, totally ignored. And this is what God is doing. He's not, he's not, he's not going to do any more of this stupid, stupid one-man ministry stuff it's not big enough to bring forth i mean that's that's how jesus obviously brought people forth because he he, he was the archetype and you know god come in the flesh but he 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 wasn't quick 30 whole years living totally in the father without sin which is why he was able to minister in such fullness but we we can have loads of people now gone into the ground, died, let God raise them up and now in your heart you have the kingdom. You have it in the kingdom. Psalm 84 describes it. Look it up, read on it, meditate. This is the truth. Men in whose heart are the highways to Zion. People who can go in, you know, a bit like the mighty men of David, have already proved themselves in faith, already achieved things. It says, gone into 
places of weeping, place, dry places, and made it a place of pools and early rains. That God has blessed a place far quicker than anyone would have imagined. These are the people that should be running churches together, hauling in nets together over cities. This is what we're about. This is kingdom. It's not kingdom, one man running a church. That's mandom. It's nothing to do with Ephesians 4. It's nothing to do with developing a culture of 1 Corinthians 12, where we're living under an open roof, watching what the Holy Spirit's doing next. We, we're familiar with that bit, but for some reason we cap it off and everything returns to a circus master running, running one church. There's no precedence for that in the Bible at all. We're about building kingdom, we're going to model kingdom, and we're going to breed kingdom, and kingdom will manifest in a very short period of months in each place. I'm not sure how much time we have anyway. So let's start taking the Bible seriously and not all this pretense that we know what we're on about.